What is up everyone, it's the Munch and Long Time No Diamond and Pearl video. It's not really my fault they haven't released any new trailers for Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl remakes or Pokemon Legends Arceus. Game Freak is keeping it real quiet on these releases. And I don't think I'm the only one that's a little worried that might be because these games are going to be one-to-one -one remakes without any new additions like Mega Evolutions or Sinnoh Forms. Which just happens to be what we're going to be talking about today. Pokemon that I I want to see get Sinnoh forms in these games. It's hard to deny that regional variants have been one of the most well-received additions to the Pokemon series with some of the Alolan forms introduced in Sun and Moon becoming even more iconic than their original versions. But we've yet to see regional forms make their way into any of the remakes. Granted, that concept didn't exist yet when Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire came out, so could we see Sinnoh and Forms make their way to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl? In this video, I'd like to imagine we are getting variants in the Sinnoh remakes and discuss which Pokemon I want to see get a regional makeover the most. So if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already for more Pokemon videos. Now, I'm not just going to choose any Pokemon from the whole national decks because we're not getting the full Pokedex in these games and it's most likely we're gonna get something close to the platinum pokedex since we've already seen porygon z pop up in the trailer i'm also not going to be considering pokemon native to Sinnoh like krogunk or the mighty bidoof since it doesn't really make sense for them to get regional forms if they were already first discovered in Sinnoh. i mean i would love for luxray to get the dark type added to it but it just doesn't really make sense if it was originally from Sinnoh, that it would look different in Sinnoh and have a different type, if you get what I'm saying. So, with all that said, let's finally begin with Ghastly. Yup, it's a Kanto Pokemon, because those definitely don't have enough forms already. But it makes sense, they're the OG, they're the most popular Pokemon, the most recognizable, and Gengar is definitely in the top 1% of that category, being one of the most iconic Pokemon up there with like Charizard and Pikachu. So for each of this Pokemon, I'm first going to give you my idea for a regional variant, and then we're going to take a look at Google and see what fans have come up with, what sort of concepts and types for regional variants we have for Gengar. But I personally would like Ghastly to become a fire type since it is already a little ball of gas and gas usually ignites fire. We all know there is a severe lack of fire types in the Sinnoh region with the original Diamond and Pearl only having Infernape and Rapidash as options. Later on, we did get like Magmortar and Houndoom, but even then it's not that many. So a regional variant that is fire type would definitely spice things up add a little more variety to the mix. And I think Ghastly would be a great Pokemon to fit this, with its design already kind of being a little ball of gas, you can easily switch that for fire. And it was originally in the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex, so it's likely confirmed to be in the game, you know, just as regular Gengar. So why not make it a fire and I'm gonna say Psychic type as its secondary. Actually, I debated making it fire and fighting type, but then I realized the whole meme of like there's too many fire fighting type starters, Infernape being one of them who's already in this game. So I switched it up to fire psychic, although if it was fire fighting, I'd like to imagine it's more of a special than physical attacker since it is Gengar, of course. But as a fire psychic, the only other one I could really think of is Delphox, and I mean, I'm not a huge fan of that Pokemon personally, so I think Gengar would fit this type matchup way better, just levitating itself around with fire consuming its body. I wonder if anybody else has had a similar idea, so we're gonna look up Gengar regional form and <laughs> already, well actually this is Ghost and Dark. Oh, there's a Poison and Psychic one that looks a little bit like what I imagine a Fire Psychic Gengar would look like instead. Here's actually a Ghost and Fire version of it, the Blue Fire nonetheless, go and Endeavor on him with the Super Heat. And there's the Evolution Haunter. I I wonder if this artist has a concept for Gengar too. Uh, well, here's a different one. Still Ghost and Poison, Gengar Beta. Interesting. We have an electric type Ghastly line. I actually really like that too. Instead of a ball of fire, you got a little ball of electricity surging around. Kind of reminds me of Rotom though, at least in its uh, Ghastly form and then when it becomes Gengar. That actually looks really badass, especially the Mega. And finally, an Ice version of Gengar. This is really cool, like the artwork for it and the fact that it wouldn't be a ghost anymore, so it's more grounded. I especially love that crown of icicles, almost like the Night King from Game of Thrones. Yeah, look at that icy, spiky thing. <laughs> 
Next up, we've got the Whoopi Boy and his evolution, Quagsire, who I absolutely love in new Pokemon Snap. They're like the cutest Pokemon ever to photograph, specifically Whooper. Quagsire is more like dorky, funny, but still fun to take pictures of. And aside from there not being enough fire types, Sinnoh has another huge problem, and that's too many dang water types. Actually, every region has this problem, but Sinnoh specifically has two water and ground type lines with Barboach, Whiskash, and Booper and Quagsire, so one of the two needs to change to add a little variety. So I'd like to just take Booper out of the water and make it a pure ground type little mud boy. It can still keep the axolotl kind of snaky aesthetic and maybe dig around the dirt like Diglett just sticking out its little Booper head. But when it evolves, I would love to see it become a ground and fairy type, which is one of the few type combinations that still doesn't have any Pokemon assigned to it. I know in the last few generations, Game Freak has been getting busy trying to fill up all those last few slots like the fire and poison went to Salazzle, water and fire, they finally made Volcanion. They still haven't gotten around to grass and fire type, but I'm sure Gen 9, they got that covered. Anyway, Ground and Fairy is one of the few remaining, and I think it would totally fit Quagsire if it has a more whimsical kind of look to it. I mean, it's already got this goofy look on its face that kind of fits some of the fairy Pokemon. Actually, here's something close to what I'm kind of imagining in my head, although this is a psychic and water type form of Quagsire instead. I could see this also being a water fairy, or maybe not a ground fairy. I mean, if you just take it out of the water and put it in the ground like Diglett, as I mentioned, it could totally be a ground fairy, just big pink quagsire sticking out the ground. Let's take a look at some other concepts, though, for a ghost and water whooper. That's so sad, though. I don't want whooper to die, dude. <laughs> Why is it pink, though? There's, there's actually a lot of pink whooper artwork on here. Oh my god, wait a minute, the fairy dragon quagsire? That's so dope. I don't know why it doesn't have any eyes, but I kind of like that, especially for a ground fairy. Like if it just burrows its way underground, it wouldn't have eyes. It can just like feel the vibrations of the earth, like a earthbender or something. You know what, Spookappy, just let Pokemon borrow this concept right here, but work it into a ground fairy instead of fairy dragon and uh, yeah, I think we got ourselves a pretty good Pokemon. This is more like what I imagine here, although I think this might be rock instead of ground type. Uh, the Whooper is really cool. I like the color scheme and then Quagsire. I mean, honestly, that could be a ground and fairy type just the way it's designed right now. Here's another Pokemon that was in the Platinum deck, so likely to be in the remakes and definitely needing of some love as Noctowl is probably the least popular early bird Pokemon. I know there's a lot of Hoot Hoot fans out there, but when it becomes Noctowl, it's just maybe one of the weakest ones too, and I don't really see a lot of people using it in their playthroughs. I mean, even Ash, I'm pretty sure, abandoned his Noctowl, and that thing was shiny, dude. You don't just abandon a shiny unless that thing is pure trash. I'm sorry, Noctowl. I'm being way too harsh right now, but it's okay because all your dreams of popularity and, uh, Whatever Noctowl's dream of will come true in Sinnoh when it gets an ice and flying type regional variant. There's a lot of snowy areas, especially in the north of Sinnoh, Mount Coronet, Snow Point City, and all those routes around there with the snowvers and snow runs and weaviles running around. So why not have a flying Pokemon soaring about as well? There's even a real life animal species it could be based on. Wait, wasn't this Harry Potter's freaking owl? Noctowl could definitely become ice and flying and it would be maybe the only good one because we have Articuno, obviously pretty good, but it's a legendary. And the only other regular Pokemon with that typing is Delibird, which is kind of a gimmick. I, I've never seen anybody use a Deli Bird. Deli Bird only Nuzlocke challenge? Anyone? No? Okay. I wonder if anybody's even come up with a Noctowl form, because I just feel like it's not very popular, but lo and behold, <laughs> literally an ice and flying type version of it, Galarian Noctowl. Obviously that didn't happen, but it seems great minds think alike, because Solian Art here has come up with an ice and flying version of Noctowl that looks super dope and I could totally see being in Sinnoh. There's actually multiple people that have come up with the same idea. Wait, these look so similar actually, but I'm pretty sure they're by different artists, so it's already in the collective consciousness. Ice and flying Noctowl game freak, just make it happen. Alternatively, there's this flying and dark Palulin 
Noctowl, which looks pretty cool. I like the big kind of mask on it there. And the Hoot Hoot looks really dope too. I'm gonna stick with the ice and flying though, because I think it would fit the aesthetic of Sinnoh, adding a little more ice variety and like, yeah, those snowy areas up there, more Pokemon to choose from. And it would maybe finally make Noctowl relevant as an early bird Pokemon. It really deserves a little more love. Unlike our next Pokemon, which already gets plenty of love, but you know, could use some more, especially after Vulpix got its Alolan form and it got nothing as sort of the fire type counterpart, because of course I'm talking about Growlithe and Arcanine. I think a lot of people were expecting it to get a Galarian form, whatever type it might be, maybe water as like the opposite of fire, or electric, which was my original idea for it until I realized there's already plenty of electric dog-like Pokemon with Manectric, Bolton, Raikou is sort of a dog-like thing, right? And even online, a lot of people have drawn electric type versions of Growlithe and Arcanine. I mean, I gotta assume this is also electric type here. And even the third one, okay. Four, dude. This is a very popular idea, apparently. Electric Arcanine might just have to be a thing, but then again, there's also a lot of water versions of it, as I was mentioning, because that's like the opposite of fire. Oh, this one's ice, actually. I like that. Evolving into ice and dragon, which finally leads me to my own idea, and that is a dragon-type Growlithe. It may seem weird at first, but Growlithe is sort of already based off the little Chinese guard dogs. I always forget their names, but... The Fu Dogs, or Chinese Guardian Lions. I don't exactly know if Arcanine was based on this, but it kind of looks like them. And as with every idea I have, apparently someone's already done it on the internet. Uh, there's this awesome artwork of Arcanine kind of dressed up like a Fu Dog or looking more like inspired by one. Obviously, if it was to be dragon type, it would have to look more like a dragon instead of just dressing like one, but I think it could totally be doable and maybe evolve into still fire and dragon or even dragon and electric type since people seem to really want that. I was about to say the only one is Zekrom and Mega Ampharos, but I forgot we actually got Arctazolt in just the last generation, but I think Arcanine would still fit as a dragon electric, just big ol' steed with more dragon-like features, but still standing on all four legs. I'm not really finding a lot of ideas online, so maybe I'll have to draw my own eventually, but sure, why not just toothless here? <laughs> We're sticking with Kanto for my next idea, which is giving me quite the headache, because it's Psyduck. A Pokemon that literally has Psy in its name, and yet it's not a Psykick type, just doesn't make any sense. Plus, the evolution Golduck isn't gold. Like, what are you doing, Pokemon? So here's my pitch. There's already those Psyduck on Route 210, I think it was. You gotta get the secret potion and like get rid of them with Cynthia or whatever. What if that secret potion had severe side effects and those Psyduck evolved into a Sinnoh form of Golduck, which is actually gold in color scheme, plus finally makes it a psychic and water type like it should be. I just feel like Psyduck is too iconic that you wouldn't want to change the design or even make any forms for it. Although they did that for Meowth and that was also pretty iconic, but Golduck is the one that more desperately needs a little bit of a makeover, so maybe not making it gold because that'd be a little cliche, but at least Psychic and Water type, it definitely deserves it. And there's not really a lot of ideas for Psyduck forms online. This one is adorable though, Ice and Psychic. I mean, at least it's half Psychic like it should be and just has a little icicle on its head. That's amazing. Okay, what, what am I looking at here? Like we're just bidoofifying every Pokemon now. Ah, here we go. Psyduck, water and fairy type. This is actually a mod. What the frick is Greymon doing back there? What the f Oh my god, what have I just stumbled upon? Why is my man playing as GTA? Let's just ignore the player character. Like, these Psyduck are actually amazing. The fact that they have a female and male variant too, or maybe that's the shiny version. I think it'd be cool if it was male, female, you know, blue and red, and maybe they have not different typing, but different moves, kind of like Meowstic. 
Oh, it is the shiny. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. But this is really cool, man, that they really modded not that hideous player character, but the Psyducks into a totally different Pokemon or regional form. Dude, why? I can't watch that anymore. I'm getting a headache now. Just make Psyduck or Golduck Psychic Water type and call it a day. Speed round! Octillery is the next Pokemon! Like I said earlier, there's way too many basic water type Pokemon in Sinnoh. Like, he already added Finneon and Luminion to the decks in this region. Oh, I totally forgot about Shellos and Gastrodon. That's a third water and ground type in the same game. Why do they- Anyway, Remoraid and Octillery are also in the game. Basic water fishes that don't really need to exist, but they do, so let's at least make Octillery a little bit better by turning it into a water and steel type, living up to its namesake of artillery and making its snout a big old powerful cannon. I'm totally basing this idea off of a previous video I did covering the possibility of ancestral forms in Legends Arceus, and there was this super dope ancient form of Octillery that turns it into a full-on cannon. I just realized it's not even water and steel type. I guess it could be pure steel type too. Just get rid of the water entirely, although water steel is a pretty good typing. Maybe. I don't know where this idea comes from. It might be like Beta Octillery's design looking more like a tank, but I love it, dude. Steel and water type fits this design even more. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are the Beta sprites. That's just hilarious. Dude's looking like a Mega Man enemy. Alolan Octillery? Was that really gonna be a thing? Bruh. <laughs> oh man, I love the internet. I don't know who came up with this. I'm assuming that name in the corner there. You are amazing for this. I think every Pokemon I've suggested so far has been from Kanto or Johto, so let's switch it up and throw a little Hoenn into the mix. Even though there weren't that many Hoenn Pokemon in the original Diamond and Pearl, you never know with the remakes at the end of the day. And one Hoenn Pokemon I would love to get some love is Baltoy, the ground and psychic little top that evolves into whatever the heck Claydol is. I guess like a floating clay pot? Just forget about all that. Hear me out though. <laughs> what if Baltoy became a grass type inspired by Tiki Heads? I don't actually know what Baltoy is based on right now. I mean, we could take a look real quick. That it seems to be based off a top. Well, duh. Hopi Kachina figures. This is what Claydol is? I mean, these look a little bit tribal, so I guess Tiki Head wouldn't be too far off. Maybe you can already tell where I'm going with this, but if Baltoy was a grass type Tiki Head, it could evolve into the long awaited grass and fire type Pokemon that we've yet to receive. And here's actually a really awesome concept by Master Rainbow of Iki Tiki and Aloha Kano. I love those names too. They don't look too much like Baltoy and Claydol, but I mean, it's just a giant mask floating in the sky, which Baltoy is just a giant pot in the sky. I can't even tell what its eyes are. Hey, someone actually drew a concept for Gengar as a Tiki mask Pokemon. That's pretty cool too. Maybe also fits the grass and fire type. Oh, these are dope also and look a little bit more like Baltoy and Claydol. So I feel that Baltoy and Claydol's design are vague enough that it could become anything, just a floating representation of culture, and in this case, the Tiki Mask, aka the best concept for a fire and grass type Pokemon. And while we're at it knocking out those type combinations that still don't exist, this next one might be the best yet. Plus, it's given some love to a Pokemon that desperately needs it, like even more than Noctowl or any of the other Pokemon in this list so far, and that is Dunsparce. How long have Pokemon fans been begging for Mega Dunsparce or anything for this little creature, whatever the frick it is? I want to know, what, the, what is Dunsparce even based off? It looks like a bug. Appears to be based on the snake-like Suchinoko. What the frick is that? Oh, it's a yokai. It looks kind of bug-like to me. It does have little wings too, so 
Why not make it actually a bug type in Sinnoh and give it a brand new evolution like we saw for example Surfetched in Sword and Shield or Galarian Corsola becoming Cursola. This could be a bug type Dunsparce that finally becomes the first ever bug and dragon type. It already has little wings so it could totally evolve into a dragon. Plus all the concepts I've seen for Mega Dunsparce have it becoming some type of dragon looking thing or almost all of them. Ooh, I remember this one, I think, from a previous video I did. These are all such amazing concepts, honestly. Why is this so bad quality? That's so badass, dude. Uh, I just remembered this rumor before Sword and Shield came out. People really thought this was going to be a bug and dragon type in the game. It could have been in the beta, but I don't know. It just looks kind of bad to me like design wise it doesn't feel like a real pokemon but of course it's easy to say that now that we know the real game is out and this obviously wasn't a real pokemon you could argue flygon deserves to be bug and dragon type more and yeah i actually agree it screams bug and dragon even though it's ground and dragon like this dude should actually be the bug and dragon pokemon but since that's not gonna happen and there's not gonna be mega evolutions ever again Maybe, I mean, we still don't know for 100%, but that's the story for another video. Mega evolutions I want to see in the Diamond Pro remakes, if they happen. Just two more Pokemon remain, and next we're going to talk about Girafferig, another Pokemon that I feel doesn't get nearly enough time in the spotlight, but it's actually really cool design-wise, and sort of lore or story Pokedex entry whatever. So if you don't know, the little Chain Chomp from Mario looking tail on Girafferig actually has a brain of its own and can even take control or move around separately. The rear head attacks in response to smells and sounds. Approaching this Pokemon from behind can cause the rear head to suddenly lash out and bite. How crazy is that? It's literally a little chain chomp attached to Girafferig. While Girafferig sleeps, the head on its tail keeps watch. The tail doesn't need to sleep. What is that, dude? It has a second brain that doesn't need sleep. How OP is that? Which got me thinking, what would happen if Girafferig died? Would that secondary brain still keep functioning? Would it take over the body? Would it become Sinnohan Girafferig, the first normal and ghost type Pokemon? Because I think that would be really dope if the tail took over kind of like the zombie body of Girafferig and you just have like the actual head dragging on like a tail. Now that I'm describing it, this sounds really morbid and uh, yeah, I, I don't think Pokemon would do it, but it doesn't have to be actually a dead Girafferig. It could be like Mimikyu where it has a little costume and the ghost is like what's underneath. Maybe I didn't think this one all the way through. But I'm not the only one with such insane ideas, because look, the first result is a normal and ghost Girafferig, which just has a little bit of a color swap there on the, well, color scheme. Purple and white looks really nice, actually. I don't know if uh, the idea behind this one is similar to what I said, because obviously Girafferig is still live and kicking. Here we got some other concepts, though. Wait, I think this might be the beta Girafferig. Primal Girafferig? That is so disturbing. It totally reminds me of that cartoon, Cat Dog, which I loved, but let's be real, that would be like... Oh, this is totally what I was referring to. The tail part becomes the main head, and then you just have a little decoy Girafferig tail dragging along. I mean, it's a Sinnoh in form, a regional variant, you know, so I don't know what this is, but I really like it. Just the idea of the tail half taking over its body and it being normal and ghost just because that's never been done before. That's all I want, okay? That's all I'm saying, and apparently other people agree, so maybe it's a pretty good idea. Let's wrap things up with another fan favorite from everyone's favorite region of Kanto, and it is going to be Dragonite. The original Dragon and Flying type. There's been talk since the beginning, basically, of Dragonite not exactly resembling its pre-evolutions. I mean, Dratini and Dragonair are blue, and then suddenly it just goes yellow for some reason and grows legs and arms. It's kind of weird. So what if this Dragonite, the one that we know and love, isn't actually the original Dragonite. And instead it used to look a little more like this concept by Griffsnuff, which is just so 
freaking cool, dude. Definitely a lot closer to Dragonair and Dratini, its pre-evolutions, not just in color scheme, but like the face and the big wings kind of floating from it. Or if you wanted it to look a little closer to the Dragonite we know, I mean, this concept here is pretty cool too by Galarian Corsola. Okay. I really like this one. And it also fits my idea for typing, which would be Ice and Dragon. I think the only one that exists is Qrem, so a non-legendary would be pretty nice to have, although Dragonite is pseudo-legendary, but still. Another concept that seems pretty popular, just drawing Dragonite looking closer to its pre-evolutions, but this is just my favorite one by far, and even this concept alone has been done by multiple different people. Like, look at that, dude, it looks so cool. I even came up with an interesting backstory for it since we know Mount Coronet is a huge part of the Sinnoh region. It's like the big landmark in the middle. What if there's only one of these ice form Dragonite in existence and it's the original Dragonite that then cursed all of the other Dratini and Dragonairs of the world to turn into the yellow version. So you go climb to the top of the snowy peak on Mount Coronet or wherever it might be to take on the original ice dragon god and if you defeat it, it gives you an egg for the original version of Dragonite which is, you know, the blue ice dragon one. I think it'd be so sick even if that wasn't its backstory, like just existing the blue form of Dragonite. Obviously a lot of fans agree with this one or at least like to imagine concepts for it and I am all on board especially with this kind of elongated design for it uh, kind of more like the Chinese traditional dragons and that's gonna do it for this video 10 ideas for Sinnoh and forms in brilliant diamond and shining pearl let me know which one of these you like the most or if you have any ideas of your own what pokemon would you like to see get a Sinnoh in form maybe it's even something from Sinnoh because i know i've seen some people saying like lucario needs another form or like Bidoof or something but i just think it'd be weird if they were originally from Sinnoh. like why would they look different now suddenly in the remake one thing we could get for Sinnoh pokemon though is mega evolutions which lucario already has one of those so the dream is dead, Lucario fans, okay? You already got plenty of love for that Pokemon. I've been spamming him in Unite recently, so I can't stop thinking about Lucario, but that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you again for watching. Leave a like if you guys enjoyed, and make sure to check out my other recent video where I've talked about Pokemon that could have been regional forms if that existed, like, for example, back in Gen 5, Crustle, totally would have been a form of Parasect. Subscribe for more Pokemon videos every week and I will catch you in the next one.